Welcome to another video Bible study by Jesus Christ Prison Ministry. Our topic, the book of Jude. Jude was believed to be a brother of Jesus. He was a brother of James, who was a brother of Jesus. It appears that the brothers and sisters of Jesus were eventually won over to Jesus as their Savior. They were able to look upon the human and see the divine. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God, the Father, and kept by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Jude wanted to share the love of the salvation that Jesus offered all who believed in him. He loved to talk of the salvation of Jesus, but in his old age, he saw creeping into the body of believers errors that were destroying the faith and salvation of the believers. Therefore, he felt it necessary to admonish and encourage the believers to stand firm in the faith once delivered to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you, they are godless men who change the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only Sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand, and what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals. These are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's heir. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. Jude is attempting to share the Old Testament examples of what happens when people fall away from the grace of Christ and his salvation. Starting with the deliverance of the Israelites from bondage, he shows that even though they were delivered, they still lost their paradise. They fell in the desert through their unbelief. We are never once saved, always saved. We must continually work out our salvation each day. As Paul said, I die daily. Jude then moves on to show how even the angels who once lived the perfect life in the presence of God were not immune to sin. They fell to Lucifer's deceitfulness and lies. So too, those who believe in Jesus can be deceived and led astray by lies that are being taught in the churches today about grace and the law of God. Then Jude explains that Sodom and Gomorrah serve as examples of eternal fire. 
This is what will happen to all who live ungodly. Those who refuse to believe and obey Jesus and those who once believed and once obeyed but fell away to the lies and deceit of ungodly people will be burned up with eternal fire. If you notice, the example is very plain that the fire is not eternal. Sodom and Gomorrah are not burning today. Their fire went out. But the punishment is eternal. Those who were burned up are eternally destroyed and will not enter eternal life. Only those who are obedient to Jesus will live eternally. The churches today are being infiltrated with Jesuits who have been trained to lead the churches back to the Catholic Church by getting all the churches to believe in grace for salvation. All churches will unite. But their unity is not in Jesus. They are not teaching the teachings of Jesus. They slander and destroy the teachings of Jesus and the works of God like irrational animals. Like Cain, they want to live their way, not God's way. Like Balaam, they want to make money off of God's word. And like Korah, they are rebelling against the one and only way God has provided for entering the promised land of eternal life. These men are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars from whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way. And of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Our churches are becoming filled with these kind of people. Jude wants to warn the believers not to let these people into their churches. However, it is too late today. The leaders, the shepherds, pastors, preachers, priests, and teachers of our churches have all been indoctrinated with the Catholic message and are leading the flock to destruction away from Jesus. Instead of teaching the teachings of Jesus to stop sinning, to be perfect, and to keep the Ten Commandments for our eternal life, they flatter the people in order to win them over to rebellion against Jesus. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold? They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit Keep yourselves in God's love. As you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault, and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. When Jude talks about these people causing divisions and being devoid of the Spirit, he is talking about divisions that separate us from the truth of Jesus. Many churches are unified in their beliefs 
But their beliefs are not the teachings of Jesus and have separated and divided the people from Jesus. The Spirit of God cannot teach anything that is opposed to the teachings of Jesus. The family of God are one. Jesus prayed that we would all become in unity with him and his truth. He stated that if we love him, we will be obedient to his command. That's found in John 14, 15. But the churches are not teaching the commands of God. Jude wants to remind the believers that their eternal life is not in the church, but in their own hands. They are to build themselves up in the holy faith. This is done by searching out and finding every command Jesus has given us and being obedient to it. That is how we remain in the Holy Spirit and in God's love. As Jude says, only Jesus can bring us eternal life. Our churches cannot save us. Our pastors cannot save us. And our denomination cannot save us. None of us are saved until Jesus comes and brings his reward with him to give to everyone according to his work. Romans, I'm sorry, Revelation 20, 13. If we live close to Jesus by being obedient to every word that proceeds from his mouth, he will keep us from failing and make us stand in joy and faultless. But if we refuse to be obedient to every command, we will fall and be destroyed. Let us test the spirits and make sure that our churches are still teaching the teachings of Jesus. If not, the Bible tells us to get out of them or we will share in their sins and be destroyed with them as those who were destroyed in the desert after being delivered from Egypt. I want to thank you for being with me and Jesus Christ, Prison Minister.